Today we are looking at cult heroes at Liverpool. I will be looking at players who've played in my lifetime and we'll be putting them into a cult hero 11. And let me tell you, this was harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to struggle to get 11. And my God, I could have two teams playing each other. They wouldn't be very good, but <laughs> anyway. So we're going to start off in goal. A few, a few contenders here, but I'm going to give it to Jersey Dudek. To be honest, you can almost put the entirety of the Miracle of Istanbul team in this list. But definitely going with, du with Dudek and the Istanbul heroics are definitely uh, one of the reasons why. First of all, the unbelievable save against Shevchenko at point blank range, which I still do not understand how he did it. He doesn't even know how he did it. <laughs> you see the look on his face afterwards, it was real. Some people interpret that as like, Ariel, I'm the man. I interpret it as a, I don't know what's going on, but I'll, t I'll take it. You have his doing the grobbler wobbly legs, saving saving a couple saving Shevchenko's penos. He's the first name on this team sheet. Jersey Dudek in goal. Go on. Now left back. This was a very tricky one, and I've had to do some maneuvering around because my god, is there a lot of cult hero left backs at Liverpool? <laughs> um, but one that stands out for me more, also a member of the miracle of Istanbul team. And what some people may say is it's a miracle that this player has a Champions League medal. Not me. And that man, of course, is none other than Jimmy Traore. Which, like, his name has almost become synonymous with, like, bad defending. Calamitous, you might say, um, in, certain, in certain situations. Just six months into his Liverpool career, he scored arguably one of the most spectacular own goals in Premier League history. But... <clears throat> Say what you want about him. The man was there in the squad, in the team, in the first eleven for the Champions League final. Clearance off the line from Andrei Shevchenko. It's just, it's just one of those nights. It really was a miracle. <laughs> Kept showing up. He's got his Champions League medal. Do you have a Champions League medal? No, I didn't think so. And on the night, he deserved it. Um, so hats off to Jimmy Traore and speaking of spectacular goals from Traore in 2013 he signed with Seattle Sounders and his first goal for the club is an absolute thunder bastard of biblical proportions under his own feet whacked away but not fully to Jimmy Traore he tries a volley oh it's spectacular goal absolutely incredible from Jimmy Traore get in there left back Jimmy Traore Centre back, Dejan Lovren, one of the best defenders in the world. Not my words, his words. <laughs> this is probably one that a lot of people will remember firsthand. Um, he was prone to the odd calamitous moment himself. I still haven't forgiven him for that shot in the FA Cup semi-final against Aston Villa. No! No! What, like, like what's actually, I mean, I love him, he's, he's in my team, but what's going through your, your head at this point? You know what? I don't score many goals, but now that I'm 45 yards out and there's only a minute on the clock, here we go. Time to be a hero. <laughs> Having said all that, he is responsible for one of the most, and I hate to use this term, but I can't think of another word. The most limbs for me for a Liverpool goal was uh, his winning goal against Dortmund. Daniel Sturridge. Milner. Can he tee up someone in red? And it goes towards Lovren. My baby at the time was only one and she was asleep and we were actually staying in uh, my father-in-law's house. So it was just me downstairs watching it. He scored this goal and I'm like, yes, back on, yes, back on, come on, yes, yes, yes. That, that was a real, that was one of the first of those clop moments. One of these sort of last gasp 
big euphoric Klopp era moments. Um, and that was him. He did it. And cool as you like in the celebration as well. Just like, yeah, what else did you expect? I'm the best defender in the world. So Dejan, you're in. Who's beside him? A man who actually did play beside him. Ragnar Klavan. You know why? That's why. Now, right back. I've had to do a bit of a spit of tinkering. It's my team. I can do it. So, the, who I have in right back is a man who traditionally played left back. And that is, of course, Andrea Dosena. Andrea? Andre? In the space, for, for four days in Liverpool, Andrea Dosena was bigger than the Beatles. Look, he was a fairly unremarkable player, with respect. He only scored two goals for Liverpool. The first was against Real Madrid, where he scored Liverpool's fourth when Liverpool blew away Real. Yes, 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 yes! That was a goal! Remember when we used to beat Real? No, me neither. And then the second one came just four days later, um, scoring a delicious lob against Man United. I mean, the man, the man will forever be a cult hero as a result of that. So fair play to you, Andre. You're in a right back. Not your favourite position, but you're in there. Now, left wing. This one is a bit of a... Well, they're all personal selections, but this one... I remember this guy a lot growing up. None other. Now, he technically wasn't a, a left winger. He was a left back. Uh, but he wasn't going to be left back out of my team. <laughs> little joke. I am of course talking about the, one of the greatest named players in Liverpool's history, Stig Ing Bjornaby. He's been described as a solid, no-nonsense fullback. I just remember his crossing ability. Goal! Yes! Yes! Striker! Those crosses from the left-hand side I just always remember Bjorn to be with the cross, Bjorn to be with the cross. Load of goals uh, scored by Fowler, Collie Moore. The last in memory for me is his cross for Fowler's fourth in Liverpool's 4 3, the second 4 3. The proof is in the pudding, and the pudding in this case is a football. Booth, eat my goal! Just a hero, a legend in my eyes. Okay. Centre mid, crucial position. Got to make sure we've got some solidity in uh, in that position. So I am, of course, opting for the Welsh Pirlo. Or was it the Welsh Xavi? Anyway, it's Mr. Joe Allen. Um, Joe Allen was actually good. You know, he wasn't the tallest. He was a short, short player. He always just seemed to make the team better when he played in it. But he was absolutely solid. Gave everything. Never, you know... He seemed, to, seemed like a ver, he seemed like a very good professional. When he grew his hair out, I tell you, I really thought he was going to kick on and be one of the greatest players in the world. Who can forget his infamous cover shoot for, what was it, Chicken? Chicken's Weekly, holding a chicken. Legend. Fucking legend. Now look, this formation is not going to be that defensively sound. Beside him is the McLegend, Gary McAllister. The father. Signed for Liverpool at, what, 35? Raised a few eyebrows. Well, he firmly lowered those eyebrows when uh, he was instrumental in Liverpool's... Now, I got criticised for saying this the last time. For Liverpool winning a treble. Not the treble. I know it's not the treble. So, we, Liverpool signed him from Coventry. I don't think it's any surprise that Coventry got relegated the next season after being in the top flight for 30-odd years. Uh, that's no accident. He scored a penalty winner against Barca in the UEFA Cup. He scored again in the final against Alaves. What a season. A, epitome of cult hero status. Scored that unbelievable free kick in the Merseyside Derby. And, and Gerard Houllier called him one of his most inspirational signings. Played 87 games. Scored 9 goals. Legend. This man also has a special place in my heart. <clears throat> because he's one of my favourite Liverpool players of all time. One of my boys. I'm talking of course about Dirk Kout. Arguably, he's too good to be on this list. And let me tell you, for Liverpool, he was a 
stick closer. A big game player. He was singled out for his defensive work, even which for a striker at the time was quite rare. Um, and he was just relentless. He just gave absolutely everything. He never, I don't think he ever dipped below a seven. Uh, scored a hat trick against United from a combined total of about six yards out. Scored pe winning penalties in the Merseyside Derby. Scored in the Champions League final for us. It was a consolation. Still annoyed about that. Who can forget his 102nd minute uh, penalty kick against Arsenal. <laughs> he scored the winning penalty kick in the semi-final of the Champions League. Shootout against Chelsea in 2007. Just gave everything. And even still, when, with Torres, with Jared in the team, my eyes were always on Kout. And when Kout scored, I just had a little extra, like, fucking yes! Striker! First up, Abubakar... Abu... Abu... TT Camera. <laughs> His stint with Liverpool in the 99-2000 season. I mean, arguably the cultish hero on this list. And I mean that positively. Let's stick him on. So you want to see him on man. <laughs> Just watch this. Absolutely fantastic. And good. Quite get the touch. Camera against Savage. Now then, camera's got paced. And he's up against Sinclair now. It's a good run, this. And it's Owen. And Liverpool are in the lead. Tio, camera. Still Titi, camera. And that should mean the three points for Liverpool. I remember on the morning then that they were supposed to play West Ham. His father passed away like that morning and Camera uh, scored the winning goal, fell to his knees, real emotional. Just, just, I just love him. Just a legend, cult hero, TT, you're in. And who's alongside him? Striker! I would like to pause for a moment. Divock Origi. Of course. He's number one for me in terms of Liverpool cult heroes because he's actually genuinely a legend. So rare to get a player who is happy. Just, I think that's what, what Liverpool fans and myself included like about him is that he seemed to just love Liverpool so much that he was happy to play a bit part role. I mean, talk about a big game player. The two goals against uh, Barca in the, in the semi-final, corner taken quickly, Origi scored the winning goal in the final and absolute ice in his veins like he you know if, if anyone scored a goal a winning goal in the champions league final i would feel like you wouldn't be able to contain yourself you'd just be like yeah. whereas Ariki just wandered off like he's just after like slotting it in and in, in training in a training session or something one of the most i one of the one of the most iconic Merseyside derby winning goals of all time. Tries to get Alexander Arnold a better angle for the ball in. That's not the daftest thing in the world. And came out to Van Dijk. It's uh, actually it's led to a redo. That's absolutely amazing. Look at Jurgen Klopp, the daftest derby goal of all time, and it's won the day for Liverpool. And this place has gone berserk! Um, winning goals against Newcastle, Wolves, just really always got us out of a jam when we needed it. He also started the comeback against uh, Dortmund. and uh, Rightly laud lauded as a Liverpool legend and peak cult hero status. Didn't play as many games um, as he could have. Didn't score in as many games as he could have. But what he gave us, man, did we love it. Fuck, I just, I just, I love Divock Origi. I'm just, I'm just gushing at this stage, but I, I, I just want to get the point across that I am a fan of Divock Origi. So that's it. And let's see how the team lines up now. We're missing, of course, a manager. And, you know, I had two, I had two in mind. I had Kenny Dalglish's second spell as manager. But I'm going to have to give it, because he's above cult hero. He is just hero. Regardless of what time he was at Liverpool. I'm going to have to give it to my man, Brendan Rodgers. He loved talking about uh, showing tremendous character. That's Scottish. <laughs> Show tremendous character. But I loved him when he was a manager. Nearly infamous. Very close to winning uh, a Premier League title. But don't forget before him we had Hodgson, 
I'm not saying he was a disaster. Well, I think you are. But and then we had Kenny. It went well for a while, but ultimately didn't quite work out. And we could have just kind of gone down a bit of a downward trajectory. Uh, but getting Rodgers was actually a great move. I look back very fondly on his time. I know, a lot, I know a lot of Liverpool players do as well. Really steady the ship. You say steady to me again. When I say something to you, you'll be on the first plane back. Steady the ship for Klopp coming in. Um, so he would be my manager. Now look, let's have a look at this team again. I won't lie. This team would probably finish mid-table. <laughs> in the league, yes. But if you come up against this team in a cup competition, let's say a final, and every one of these players is on their game, lots of luck. So this stuff really works? Certainly does. Oh, well, lots of luck! Oh. Okay, are you? They'll absolutely destroy you in a hard-fought 1-0 victory. <laughs> what do you think? Who have I missed? I, I know I've missed people. And I've consciously missed people, and I'm sure I've unconsciously... I'm sure as I'm editing this video right now, I'm going... How could I not have included? But let me know, uh, who would you have? I'd be very, very genuinely interested to know. I always kind of scoff from people like, let me know in the comments what you think. I'm like, yeah, all right. You're just looking for that engagement, aren't you, you sap? But I actually am interested. I would love to know your cult hero 11. Um, and the best one I'll pin to the top. What a prestigious honor. And I'll catch you next week. Up the Reds.